Ductile iron pipes are made of 90% recycled metal and have a lifespan of hundreds of years. Production begins in the pipe factory's scrapyard. These old cars are on their way to a shredder that chews them up into little bits. The factory sorts the bits by material. It discards the plastic, sells the aluminum and copper, but keeps the steel and iron. The factory also gets scrap steel from demolished buildings and other sources. After analyzing the chemical composition, it sorts the shredded metal accordingly. The crane operator uses an industrial magnet to gather a specific weight of each type of steel and iron. The shredded metals go into a blast furnace fueled by coke, a form of coal. At 1400 degrees Celsius, the iron and steel liquefy while impurities are carried away. Workers then add magnesium. This turns the metal from ordinary gray iron into stronger, more flexible ductile iron. The molten iron travels down a trough into a casting machine. It enters a spinning mold. Centrifugal force spreads the iron against the mold walls. A cooling system chills the walls, so the iron solidifies within seconds. Then an extractor pulls out a 6-meter cast iron pipe, the standard industry length. Before each casting, workers insert a round form, called a core, into one end of the pipe mold. Iron fills the void between the core and mold, forming a flared edge, called a bell. The core also seals off that end of the mold, preventing molten iron from flying out during casting. To connect pipes, installers fit the bell of one pipe over the straight end of the next one. A rubber gasket seals the link together. They can make pipes of different diameters with the same casting machine by changing the size of the mold inside. After extracting the pipe, the factory weighs it and measures the wall thickness to ensure everything meets specifications. Then, on the bell end, they remove the core. It's made of sand and plastic resin, so it simply disintegrates. This factory makes pipes in several diameters. But regardless of size, the casting process is always the same. It just takes less time with smaller pipes because they solidify faster. A freshly cast pipe is about 800 degrees Celsius, but as soon as it leaves the mold, it cools quickly. Such rapid cooling makes the iron brittle so the pipe goes directly into a gas-fired annealing furnace that reheats it to 930 degrees Celsius. This alters the internal structure of the iron, making it flexible again. The pipe then runs through a cooling chamber that showers it in cold water. To prevent the iron from corroding, they spray the inside with cement, building up a lining three millimeters thick. Then they smooth it out by spinning the pipe for a few seconds. They paint the entire pipe, inside and out. That seals the surface, enabling the cement to cure over the next 24 hours. It also provides some extra rust protection. Finally, a robot paints a stripe around the straight end of each pipe. This is a depth guideline to let the installation crews know when they've inserted the straight end of one pipe as far as it can go into the bell end of the next one.